Dig this, cause this single on a Saturday night right here at TGI Fridays, 4,000 City Act. We do this every four Saturday and you are welcome to join us. And just not to get it confused, it is not just for single people. It is if you've ever been in a relationship and you have anything to talk about. Because how are we gonna know about being married or being engaged if we don't speak to people who have actually been there because I I've never been married you know I don't understand Man. what this whole marriage thing is all You'll about but we are we have great couples here and I think we were in the middle of a debate last week about whether uh, if you are in a relationship and your man cheats is it the person who you're cheating with fault and, and I, I would have to tend to agree with Danielle is if the man cheats he's the person who has an obligation to you oh, not that I want to ever be with anybody else oh, man, woman. but the man or woman is their obligation to you not the person who they're cheating with the person who cheated just trying to get a squirrel, you know what I mean? They're trying to get their nut. That's what they're trying to do. You know what I mean? So it's not their fault. Not that I'm going to ever do that. Not, but not that I have, I have done it. Well, so, I'm gonna oh, say oh, I can't even I say never, never say never. No, forgive me. No, 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 no. I say I. You know, you can't even never say never. You Especially can't. no, because I never thought I would you, never. I never thought exactly. I would do that. I never well, thought. Not, not only until that, until he came up with his smile, I'm like yeah, live but by what Stash said, the trade-off ain't worth it. Well, maybe that's what you to say you, when you don't do to it. him. To but what we're talking about is the dude that decides to yeah. do it. Exactly. Who is the liability and culpability yeah. on? Because she they she wanted to start talking about the bond of sisterhood. And as a woman, I'm supposed to be bound to some woman I don't know and care no, about her feelings and, and worry bound, about bound her, her just bound to yourself. No, now I that's a different story. Answer that. No, but that's a different right, story. Right. If you're saying, I'm never going to play second no, to nobody. But wait a minute. But if mm -hmm. I, again, and I'm using I in the collective, mm -hmm. if I'm the kind of woman that I don't care and I don't value I mean, myself and you. I don't respect myself, or, I, what it, or maybe I don't really want him, I just want my nut and I like sending him on back then to that's you. that's your twist. I don't know. Well, go ahead, Frankie. But, go ahead, Frankie. Go ahead. I'm going to say that the liability lies on the two people, the two parties are in a relationship. Exactly. I am in a committed relationship with Derek. So therefore, I'm not going to disrespect Derek. And the same thing should go for Derek. Derek should not disrespect me. Now, as far as the thirsty chicks, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. that don't care if the man is in a relationship or whatever the case may be, that's because they are... They have something going on within themselves, some self self esteem. It can't because always it's all be about standards. Chick. You have it to can't. have standards. You trying to tell me if a man you come up with you, you got women too. You trying to tell me if a man come up with you, one at a time, ladies, one at a time. Now, listen, listen, listen. You got women that are coming after the men. Right, the ones coming after him. What about when the man comes up, like I said, what about you meet a man, right? He comes up to you, hey, how are you? He gets to know you, he takes you on dates. He's seeing you, he's seen you for a while, and then all of a sudden he goes, you know what, I forgot to tell you I was married. Or and I forgot you to tell you. And if you make a decision, and if he tells you that, this. then what's your choice going to be? You are, you, are you going to continue? It depends, was it good or was it not? If it was good, I might keep going. Shelly, think about this. <laughs> I always it's talk about the points of temptation. Not, I wouldn't do that now, but I, in my younger years, those it three happened. components: temptation, lust, and opportunity. There's always going to be a degree of temptation. Men being physical, but visual creatures, or may have a degree of lust. But the only thing, and I'm gonna stress, the only thing that gets you in trouble if you exercise opportunity. If you don't exercise right. it, there is no trouble. That's the only point. Exercise. We're talking about when you don't about exercise. We Ooh. are not talking about that. You right. trying to make it a whole different conversation. No, I'm no, just saying. I'm gonna talk about exercise. Now that right. you're talking about exercise, let's talk about basketball. So let's go to basketball, right? <laughs> let's let's talk about pass that mic to uh, Roberto, please. Okay. Let's talk about basketball. We have. <laughs> Derek Gathers here. And if you heard the name Derek Gathers, you understand that Hank Gathers is his brother. So introduce um, our guest today. Well, we have uh, several guests from that 1985 basketball team at Dobbins Mural Vocational Tech High School. Uh, Wait a minute, you all hype, Dobbins, Dobbins. Oh, yeah, 85, baby. We have Heat, Daryl Gates. Heat. We have Derek Gathers from that phenomenal basketball team. And we have another guest in the house that wrote a story based on Hank Gathers and that 85 team, and that's Tony Paris. We have Tony Paris in the house also. And we're gonna talk to you, we're gonna bring that home to you. I was like following that team, celebrating the championship, the high school championship at Dobbins, and we'll turn it over to Derek. Hey, how's everybody doing? Yeah, now that we got all into your life, now let's tell us about 
<laughs> and tell them about basketball and how yes. you exercise. <laughs> yes, well, and we building it all into relationships. You know, basketball has definitely been wonderful in my family's life as little boys. We were born and raised in Raymond Rosen Projects down on Diamond Street. Um, and we met uh, Daryl, my friend Daryl here in, back in 70s. And you say he is one of the players Absolutely. from that, right. from that Absolutely. team. Absolutely. Yeah, this is my partner in crime right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we met Daryl back in like 78, something like that. Me and Hank graduated, grade, yeah, like seventh grade. We graduated from William Dick Elementary School, which is on 24th and Diamond Street. Me and Hank was uh, born in the same year, 1967. Same mom, same dad. We was 10 months apart. So basically, we grew up like twins. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we grew up like twins, graduated sixth, eighth grade, and 12th grade together as twins. Went out to California, and it was all from basketball. Basketball took us a lot of places. It did a lot of things for us. Made a lot of relationships. A good friend, Dave Scott, sitting here. is another friend, Roberto, playing baseball. So sports, in, in general, builds relationships. And so uh, today, we just put out a docu-film, Tony Parrish and I, Daryl Gates was involved. Uh, it's called Hank Gathers Made in Philly. And you guys can watch it tonight. It's on uh, TCN, on Comcast at 9.30. You guys can watch it. And uh, I'll let Daryl say a little bit about our relationship. Hello, everybody. Um, well, these guys right here, man, I mean, especially him and, and Hank that I miss dearly. Oh man, it was just so much fun and so much good, good history, good stuff, you know. And that documentary is real; it's very good. You have to see it. I don't know when this is supposed to air, but well, actually, why, when this airs, this will um, it would have already aired. Yeah, but right, that's why we want to so, know they're going to have a website. We'll give the information with well, the website when it airs. But more importantly, let's talk about Hank Gathers because we're talking about different generations. We're all from different generations. Yeah. We're not all in that mm -hmm. same generation. I just happen to have done a little bit of research. You know, because, you know, Roberto told me that you were coming. But yeah. the research is, who is Hank Gathers? I mean, Hank Gathers is a legend, a legend. in Hank, Philadelphia. You, we know that. He's a basketball gotta, you legend. You don't got enough film for me to tell you about Hank Gathers. I know, but right. let's, 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 let's school but some of the Hank people Gathers, who may not know who Hank Gathers is. This guy, man, when I met him, he was 6'2". Derek, met them both, and we, and we played ball. I grew across from the street from the school. And this guy was just... He couldn't play ball. He just couldn't play. He couldn't get it. He Who couldn't play listen, ball? Listen, let me finish the story. This, okay, this is okay, a good I'm story. <laughs> this is a good, let me tell you, he couldn't play it. I mean, he could play, but I mean, as far as like, you know, you probably can go out there and shoot the ball, but you know, but he couldn't, his fundamentals wasn't there. And wow. he just worked, worked, worked. Like if any kid would have, you they know. They say he had he the most the, energy of the heart, anybody. Like the heart of a lion. Yeah. I never yeah. seen nobody like that ever. I never met nobody like this guy ever in my life. And he just pushed, pushed, pushed until he got to the best, to the top. He wouldn't take no for an answer. He just did. He just worked. All kids should see this story about this guy because... Absolutely. You should see the story. And then he played, Hank Gathers actually played a game when he was in college against Shaquille O'Neal. Oh my God. So did they win that game or not? No, I know they, they, lost. Like, they he lost. lost. But he but did it, play but against Shaquille O'Neal. you see this guy, Shaq is seven foot. He's six seven. And this guy just keep coming. Just keep coming. And Shaq talks about him today. Yeah, TV. Yeah. He talked about this guy today because he said he never met played against nobody like that. Just kept coming, kept coming, and it was he had forty eight points, what twenty something rebounds against Shaquille O'Neal. Against yeah. Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, yeah. So if Good you story. don't know, you really need to do some research, and you'll be able to see it on the website or go to Facebook and just look up the Hank Gathers because this film is amazing. And well, it, maybe Tony can tell you more about well, the film. Well, I just have a question. So it's been thirty uh, years. That's what you guys were telling us. Yes. Why now? What is it that you're trying to, to bring from the story and to teach the youth about, I mean, because, you know, in well, 1985, no, you, you, and I say that because in 1985, Philadelphia well, was a rough on, place. Going on out here today with mm -hmm. the kids, as far as the kids. I mean, you can go to any playground, any schoolyard right now. There's not one kid in there playing basketball. I know it's hot as hell out there, but what I'm saying, we did that. We did it in our boots. We did it in the snow, and it's like... The kids need some kind of direction like that, like we have. Do they have the Sunny Hill League? Is that still they, in? Not, well, they have it, but it's not nowhere not like it was. Not like before. where it was no, before. No, not like it was before. Yeah. And we have a lot of stuff going on the 25th and Diamond League for the kids. But far as like, 
you know, just why now is because it's, it's important that the kids see what type of person that he was and where he came from. And like anybody can make it. And for this guy to, you know, die on the court, you know, let him rest in peace. And yeah, we're going to go to a break because, you know, that, that whole thing, when you watch it, like you can see YouTube clips here and there when you watch him actually fall on the court. And, and then he tries to get back up. He's like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to get up. You know, he, he don't want to lay down. He, he tried, tried to fight. fight. And he tried to fight. Even, he, almost like to the death. He tried to fight. And, and it just happened. But we're going to go to a break right here. TGI Fridays, 4,000 City Ed. It's single on a Saturday night. Urban Expressions. We're all still here, you know? Hey, everybody. My name is Sheena. I'm the creator of the Harry Situation app. If you don't have it, download it now. You may be having a hairy situation, and I can help you with that. I provide helpful tips on how to maintain the proper cause and how to purchase the perfect hair for you. So get the app, Hairy Situation, on your Google Play or your iTunes store. Hairy Situation, download it now. Yeah, huh? Yeah, we back here with Single on Saturday night discussing the legend of Hank Gathers. I had a great opportunity because that was what we call the, the guts and grind era of basketball in Philadelphia, the mid 80s. And Dobbins Tech was in our division, um, University City Dobbins Tech, Ben Franklin. So in order to advance and be a quality team, you had to get through the wars with the Gathers brothers, who Richardson and them with Ben Franklin, and we were from down the bottom in West Philadelphia. Hank meant a lot to the league, as Derek talked about, the brotherhood of basketball is the biggest bonding thing for black men in inner cities, on that playground, talking, being able to have the rights to go to a different neighborhood. Coming from West Philly, I got a free pass to go to North Philly because I know Daryl, I know Eric, we all played ball together, and ba basketball players had free passes during a time, like you was talking about, that was real brutal in Philadelphia. I have a scar on top of my head that I sport today from Eric Gathers, from his brother, from Hank playing in Dobbins in that little matchbox gym. And I was so glad that in 30 years that we all know the history of guys who came through the league when we came through. All the guys that played in the 70s, we can tell them their names. Young kids now don't know the history of the league, don't know the guys. I was so glad to know that the story was being presented because it's a story about work ethic, about heart, about commitment, and a love for something. So I wanted you know, to go to you and say, you know, Shelly said, why now, right now? What is the message 30 years later that you want young people and other people today to see about Hank Gathers? Well, the first thing we, we tried to focus on was celebrating the life of Hank Gathers. Uh, there was a documentary that was created a few years ago on Hank and it was more focused on his college career and his death. We tried to focus more on his life and how he grew up in Philadelphia, how he played basketball in Philadelphia, the things he had to go through, the competition he had to face, because there was so many great basketball players in Philadelphia during this time. So we tried to focus on that aspect of Hank Gathers' life. And it's a great story. It's, it's a really great story. Like a lot of these gentlemen here are, are part of this story. Uh, Blair Floyd, Brent Mosley, who also has a documentary coming out. Um, you know, he and Derek, and we have who Richardson and, and Lionel Simmons and uh, Doug Overton, they all had a, a, a significant part in making this story, and, you know, and, and telling the world, you know, what happened back then? What happened in 85 and 86? And how many other championships that were, that were won during that time? Because Dominus wasn't the only team that won back then either. I mean, Gratz had a great team, Ben Franklin had a great team, and, and, and talking about relationships like we did earlier. You know, Hank, Derek, Heat, all these guys built relationships with everybody in Philadelphia. Brent Mosley was a mentor to Hank during that time, you know, and he built a relationship with him. You know, these guys still feel something inside of them for Hank, you know, even after all this time, after 26 years. And so do many thousands, thousands of people in the city of Philadelphia, and even in, in the West Coast, because he played basketball in college. Wasn't he um, uh, had the opportunity to go uh, to the the big leagues and, and he opted to go to college his junior year, his ju junior year in college he they stayed they were going he decided to stay in school as opposed to going to you know the big leagues yes he was all american um first team all american he was the second man in the history of the ncaa to lead the nation in scoring and rebounding there was only one man 
uh, that did it. His name was Xavier McDaniels, and my brother was the second man. To date, today, there's only three men in the history of the game to ever break a record like that. And the third one was uh, Kurt Thomas, who was an NBA player for about 18 years, is retired now. But my brother had an opportunity to go to the NBA after his junior year. He led the nation in scoring and rebound. My mom told him, don't, don't uh, give up, go back to school and get your degree. Because in my family, nobody had ever went to college. So again, uh, to allude to what the sister said earlier, you know, it's so, it's so prominent now of today because these kids of the day, they don't have any guidance. They don't have the fathers at home, you know, they got moms raising the kids by themselves, the kids raising their they own selves by themselves, you know what I mean? And this is where we see all the violence that's going on all over the world. So now we're using basketball as a vehicle to teach these kids life skills, to teach these kids about love, to use relationship, the word relationship, to build love throughout all communities. So I have the Gather Around Foundation, which uh, you can locate me on Facebook and things of that nature, Twitter and things of that nature. And, and we're looking for donations. We're looking for people to help out so that we can go not just in Philadelphia, but touch all communities all over this country with the Gather Around Foundation so that we can bring love and relationships back to these communities. But isn't that something like he told, you know, his mom, your mom said don't go to the, the NBA, but when it comes down to it, you do all this basketball. I'm not, I'm not in the sports, but you play all this basketball, you go up and down these courts, but you make no money. Like, wh how does that happen? Like, don't, don't, how, how, how do you? You Wait. need a microphone, baby. <laughs> you, I mean, you do make money in a sense. You go to school, you get a. Oh, because he um, he got a uh, well, he got and, his and school get, and, you, and you get a degree after all of this. Thank like, you. I have been trying to preach this to all these little boys out here. Everybody think they gonna go to the, they they oh I can just skip, go. I can just skip basketball. I said look, I everybody that plays basketball and get a scholarship, you get an education. Yes. So yes. you know my education was three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. I don't know how much theirs was. And it was free. And, it was exactly. free for him. And the, and the thing is, it's like it's free and it's like. You getting an education, and a lot of guys don't realize that they think they can go out of hundred guys. Only one person make it an NBA. On, but you can still get a college degree. Get a college but not, for free. For not free. everybody gets a scholarship, though. Well, you're right. right. That's when the other mm -hmm. stuff come in grants. I mean, other it's other ways to go about. Like mm -hmm. me, you know, I didn't finish school. I wish if I had to do it all over again, I'll go about it a different way. But what I'm saying, he did get something out of it, mm -hmm. and I think you know, by him, what happened to him, it touched a lot of people. Unfortunately, it was a bad mm -hmm. thing. But I mean. You know, he got something out of it to me. Uh, absolutely. I'm not saying that he didn't, but we're, you, you're saying you're spreading love, you want to bring it in the kids. Sometimes people think, I'm thinking like them. Well, how do I make money? How, well, you know, how you know what they're thinking. I'm going to get on the corner, I'm going to scramble. Exactly. That's so, what the BS so, so you have to feed them with the information. Okay, well, well yeah. That's what, that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. You know? right. And it's a different time period now that social media wasn't around. People can get more exposure into seeing kids play here on the East Coast compared to the West Coast, so information can be spread around. It's a lot of, more schools are in the cities now. There's more AAU programs, those kind of things for the sport. When you was talking about the statistics, like look at the statistics, five million kids play ball every year. Out of that five million, 420,000 play high school. Of that 420,000 that play high school, 46,000 plays in college. Of that 46,000, only 62, 64 get drafted. So the numbers are not in your favor. And of that 60 that get their name called, only about seven start on their team for an average of three years. Very good. So the degree is what it is. Very good. That's the trade-off. Yes. I know the numbers. Yes. Who said, let me take him with me. And he taught my brother electrician. He taught my brother how to be a plumber. Right now, my brother is a millionaire with a GED. We got to teach kids to find a niche. Everybody's not school material. Absolutely. But the other thing that these gentlemen did tell you was that Playing ball taught you the brotherhood. It wow. taught you Absolutely. discipline. Absolutely. It gave you commitment to something. Yes. I don't think that it's but always just, just about just the road that is yeah, that is most in case traveled. You don't, you may not make it to the NBLs. What else do you like? But what that electrician like is also do? that was an education. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. We don't teach these kids to find your niche. It may be something else you're good at. You may not make it to the NBA. But what else is it that you like? I agree. I agree. And um, again, with my foundation, we also are uh, getting involved with other organizations trying to team up with trade schools outside of school. Because even though Roberto and Daryl and us went to a trade school, they shut, they trying to shut down a lot of the trade schools today. So what we're trying to do is 
uh, open up more trade schools through basketball vehicle so that we can get teach these kids of something other than basketball, other Are than you sports. Still playing? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. May I ask you a question? Did you coach anywhere with your dad in the house? No. My mom was a single mom. Mm. And as uh, Daryl was, most of our most of our teammates uh, we, fortunately, we had a priest by the name of Father David Hagen who took care of us in, as a father figure and blessed us and got us all the things we needed, whereas the other kids had, we didn't have, so. You know, take it, you know, do the thing with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> father David Hagen, much father love to David, the Hagen family. Much love. Then we're going to go to a break and come back and we're going to find out more and, and, and try to find out how we can get in touch with you, find out how you can donate to the organization. This is single on a Saturday night right here at TGI Fridays. Howard Gilliam Jr., My Special Day TV. It comes on every Thursday, 1 p.m. on phillycam.org slash web channel. So you can see it all around the world, wherever you are. And of course, alvinastyles.com. That's the jewelry, you see it? The bling, the blingage. They can't see it because your hair is too fabulous. Oh, yes, because <laughs> Rashina Store made that look good. Let's go to a break, all right? Asia Sparks. The whole veil comes off. I felt so good. I'm walking out aisle telling myself, like, my special day was at my home. It's popping. So, J Live. Did the gas and took off. Yeah. Um, during that time. So, okay, we've got the docu-film and we're reaching back. What are you all doing outside of the foundation? Like, does anybody still play or coach? I mean, you had Father Hagen's to raise you. Who you raising? Other than that, you because you know it take a village. Well, you, need a, you need a you need a you need a mic. My son is in the gym now, and it's like I work, I drive a bus, and my schedule is real crazy. So I try to get there every Saturday, every weekend. They play in the league. Um, every Saturday we get together. They play in the 50 and over league. Well, let me tell you why. 50 I'm asking. and over. Let me specifically I tell you why I'm asking. The reason I'm asking is that I actually do go to several of these basketball tournaments, okay. mm -hmm. and the kids have absolutely no direction. I play college ball. Okay. And they don't understand the fundamentals You're right. of basketball. You're right. I went to and my son game the other day, <laughs> and I got mad and I left. I'm like, yo, because the coach, I felt bad because I'm, they trying to tell my son something. I'm like, yo, this guy I don't know what he's talking about, and I felt bad and I got up and left. Not just be, not to make my son, but I just couldn't take it. And it was like, yo, like you said, they don't have no sense of direction. And you know, Derek was running. I thought out. Derek. I thought you coached. Yeah, he coached. He, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, I'm also um, teamed up with a Check It Up organization, uh, Jeffrey Murray, down at the Martin Luther King Center. They have a boot camp every Saturday. They also have a league for uh, young, the youth, uh, 15 and under, 13 and under, and 10 and under. Um, so uh, we also do mentoring programs there as well. We also do pep rallies. We also do talent shows for kids to come and uh, showcase their talent. Uh, we also have pep rallies where we uh, get ready to have a tournament, uh, non-violence, uh, non zero tolerance, for the summertime for the kids out here. We're going to make them make a pledge so that they won't get involved in any nonsense this summer. But um, to allude to what you said earlier, it's very, very important that we mentor these kids, not just with basketball, but life skills. You know, we big on life skills. We big on telling them how not to get involved with that person telling you to sell drugs or go here and do this and do that. We very, very big on that. I'm also a motivational speaker. I travel around to different cities and states talking to the youth all over about life skills, about taking care of themselves and taking care of their siblings and taking care of their friends and family as well. Very big on that. So we very, very big on mentoring the kids of today because we all know they're not like we was. They cut from a different cloth. So we have to give them a lot more attention and a lot more love and consideration that we didn't have when we were growing up. One, I'm sorry, you have a trailer, right? Give me two seconds. You have a trailer to the film, yes, right? And how can we find the trailer? The trail can be found on uh, YouTube at uh, A Paris Films. It's Paris. called Paris, like the city, and it's uh, it's called uh, Hank Gathers Made in Philly. It can be found on that site. And there's another site that we're working currently working on on Facebook, a website for the film, and that will also be called Hank Gathers Made in Philly. And the 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 next showing for the film will be tonight, uh, July 23rd at 9:30 p.m. on TCN Channel 8. After that, it'll be seen again on July 30th at 10.30 p.m. on CSN. 
on Comcast. And that will be the last airing uh, for the month of July. Okay. The part of mentoring that we also got a model is them, that kids seeing couples, Help families, relationships, 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 seeing love in the family, seeing men and women dating, holding hands, the expressions of love. That's the other part of mentoring outside of the basketball. And that's why it's so important. And I'm, I feel so good about us having the couples here that now young kids get to see people that are getting married, going to be married in, in that couple. And they actually love each other, because you know how marriage does have a bad reputation, so to hear you speak about how much you love each other. Actually, you know, I don't even think that marriage has a bad reputation. It has been devalued. I don't think that it's a bad reputation. It is mm -hmm. that, you know, when I was a child, it was you were going to educate yourself, and then you get married, and then you have a family. Now it's, no girl, I want to grow up with my kids. I'm going to have me some babies when I'm 19. Uh, I can go back to school and well it don't matter if I got five kids some man gonna want me it don't matter if I got six kids some woman will have me we have lost that value, value. of the fundamental idea of family Man, you know other. don't don't hey we just had the Republican National Convention we here in Philly the, the Democratic National Convention starts today right. and y'all know that if Obama had three ex-wives and six kids uh, it would not be called a blended family y'all know that <laughs> absolutely so um <laughs> stash stash and Dominique right right okay right do you plan on having children together? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's great, but you're not having children, are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. Yes. He said you're done with children. You, you know what? I, I, what I want to, you know, the, the, the ask her. No, that you're trying, and that don't mean you want to accomplish it. To, that just means you want to practice. talk about the longevity of marriage, because you said you've been married a couple of times, and Nikki, you were married. How, how long were y'all married in y'all previous? So, you know, to give them some information, like when you were married before. Um, my first time, it was uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And on my second one, my, my wife passed away in 2013. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, of cancer. Of how many years? Um, we was married on, uh, we got married in two, 2000, so 13 years. 13 years, okay. Wow. Right. You really are a long haul like, kind of dude, really dude. Oh, he's a marriable hey, guy. I'm a, long, I'm a long dude, and I'm, I'm looking for a safe relationship. Nothing on the side. And I met a, one, a wonderful woman. I mean, she puts me before herself, and that's one of the keys, because I'm going to put the woman before myself. And when both two people giving, uh, but the can't beautiful move. thing. So, can't move. so do, like, I've always, like, you've said that you wanted to marry someone who's never been married, and that's always been my thing. Because is there as a, ever residue left from the, the yes, marriages right. before, though, that, that residue almost like, oh, well, my wife did this, and, and I won't trust you. Or, or, you know, they're always at expectancy of what someone did before that you're not doing now. Is there some residue left over? None at so, all. When you find true love, I, I, I still can't believe I wanna, I'm getting married. Because when my first marriage fell, I was like, they not crap, I'm done, I'm just going to do me, I'm going to kick it or whatever. And love just chopped all that ice around my heart. Wow. I have no mm. nothing. My yesterdays is my yesterday. I, wow. I don't even mention it. It would be, I think it would be remiss if we don't mention, like, I'm spiritual. I'm, I'm very spiritual. I'm a Christian. You know, I love the Lord. Amen. So, uh, and so, does, so does my baby Frankie. So uh, it would be remiss if we don't mention uh, God. I think it's very, because God is love. Yes. So if you guys don't have God in your life, some shape, form, or fashion, I think it's going to fail. So um, it would be remiss if we don't put God in this whole um, live uh, talk show today and say that I, I pray that all you guys find love in God first and then find your mate after that love that you find in God. You're absolutely right. All right, this is the end of the show. Um, congratulations to the couples. Definitely um, August 26th for you, September 20, 23rd for you. Congratulations. And uh, Are you getting married too? Oh, we didn't know yeah. that. We just told you when you said yeah. He said that. Yeah, he said that. Yeah. yeah, I forgot that. But yes, congratulations. congratulations. It is really... It is really love in the air, right? 30 years. I haven't seen her in 30 years. And we saw each other and then we get married. This story sounds very familiar. Uh, wow. Wow. Well, and like he said, God brought her to me. God brought her to you. <laughs>
<laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Women and, and possibly, actually, you said God, so we're going to yes. pray that God brings y'all together next because, you know, God wants you to do that thing right. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. right. But I want you to know, Derek, if you decide you want to come to the show to propose, there's a small fee because we ain't going to let you I use power for free. I just I want feel you to know Okay. Shout out to E9 Tabernacle Baptist Church, Pastor Waller. All right. Yeah, we it's the single on a Saturday night. Thank you so much to Howard Gilliam Jr. New Video Productions. Don't forget to watch my special day TV every Thursday at 1 p.m. Of course, you can watch Single on a Saturday night every Wednesday at 10.30 p.m. on Comcast 66, Verizon 29. And you can look for the Hank Gathers information on our website, on our Facebook page.